Hello everyone. Today I'll be introducing a new type of service interchange that was thought up by one of our viewers, uh, David Rodini. So thank you, David, for the idea. And we'll be comparing it to a couple of traditional service interchange types. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the three types of interchanges we'll be looking at today. The one on the far left is known as a diamond interchange and should be fairly familiar to everyone who's played City Skylines before. This is your basic on and off ramp style of service interchange. And in the center we have a more complex take on it, which is known as a diverging diamond interchange. The one on the far right is the one we'll be introducing today as I think it's fairly unique. We're going to call it a diamond accentuated with a Michigan left turn nearby, or a D-A-M-N, or DAM for short. I really like the name, and I really like the idea. In this video, we'll be showing how to construct each of these, and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison by replacing each of these interchanges into an existing area and see how they compare. We'll start with the diamond interchange. To start construction of a diamond interchange, you're going to need a basic highway setup. From there, we create our cross street, which is done by simply making a six-lane road that goes across the highway, and then goes as far down as you need it to go into your city before going down to ground level. And to finish the actual diamond part of the diamond interchange, you take a highway ramp tile, and I like to put it just past this first node, about halfway down, and about five units out this way, and then do the same thing here. Make sure that it's lined up so that the spaces look even, and then do the same for the other side. Clean up your highways with a couple of two-lane highways following our lane mathematics principles that we've discussed, and there you have it, a simple diamond interchange. To get started with the diverging diamond, you of course need to start with your two three-lane highways already set up, then in a major difference, instead of starting with a six-lane road or a four-lane road, you start with two two-lane roads that go the wrong direction, and I like to have them about four units apart. Now by wrong direction, what I mean is if this was a right-hand drive country, you can see that this lane is going the wrong way, as is that one, compared to what they normally would be. The point of the diverging diamond is to get people on the opposite side of the road so that left turns are more easy, easy to make. In order to create the first part of the diamond, you need to go out five units and then down two so that you are in the middle of these two roads. You then take your two lane roads right there and connect it to this side of the highway. And then you do the same thing with that other side there. So now you have a nice cross pattern right there. You do the same thing for this other side. So now you have this kind of uh, start of a super S pattern. To make it more symmetrical, I do like to go out five units and do the same thing out this way. And it creates kind of a fish tail. And the same on that side. Once you've got that, you can line it up with this node here to get that perfectly straight there. And you can see it's eight units. You then want to make sure you get your highway ramp, line it up with this exit, and have it reach right there. And then get rid of this little uh, connector piece. And you want to connect those two corners there to create this part of the diamond. I personally like to make this a two lane ramp, at least for part of it, so that you can have an even split there, but you don't have to do that. You then follow the same principle for all the exits and the entrances. Line up all of your entrances and exits so that they look symmetrical, and then finish off your left and right turns off of the entrances and exits, and you should end up with something like this. Now to finish it off, you take your exiting road, you add them to the end. In this case, it's going to be a two-lane road on each side. You line it up with the edges there, giving enough room to make this little diamond pattern there fit, and connect them to the corners just like this. 
In order to make the diverging diamond work well, I do recommend Traffic Manager President's Edition, and you will need a traffic light here as well as here, and you need to make sure your lane connectors are working to make sure that all of the cars go in the right direction. The final interchange we'll be looking at today is the diamond accentuated with a Michigan left turn nearby, or the dam. You start off similar to the diverging diamond where you have two separate roads on top of or below your freeway or highway entrance and exit, but past that there is very little similar about them. The first thing is the center roads do go the correct direction. The cars are all on the correct side of the road, whichever way that is, whether you're a right-hand drive or a left-hand drive country, they'll be on the right-hand side or left-hand side respectively. And you stretch this out as far as you feel you need to go, similar to the Super Streets and Michigan Left Turn video. You can make this your whole boulevard and just keep doing the Michigan Left Turns all throughout. Once you have the length of your main avenue or boulevard or whatever you're calling it, you can take a highway ramp, or I honestly prefer a two-lane highway for some of these busier intersections. I like to go a couple of nodes down just so they have a place where I can allow them to change lanes if I so choose. Then you take your curved road tool, do it at approximately a 45 degree angle, and create a U-turn point right there. You do the same on the other side, giving them a couple of nodes to play with. And then you create your entrance and exit ramps as you normally would with a diamond interchange. You can perform some basic lane mathematics in order to create the entrance and exit ramps. And then I prefer to use a lane connector on this turn here just to make sure that they don't go on this inner lane and here to ensure that people who are getting off the freeway here do not take a U-turn and then take another U-turn to get back on the freeway. This is a completely optional step, but I found it does help with the flow of traffic in a lot of cases. If you're noticing traffic getting bogged down, a simple default traffic light where the U-turn area is or where the right turn is can greatly help your traffic as it allows people to perform their U-turns while not up being obstructed by people going forward. Here we have the standard diamond interchange. As you can see, it is handling the traffic fairly well with a bit of lane manipulation, forcing left turns to only be in a certain lane. However, you do get a lot of conflict with the left turns, as well as a bit of traffic buildup on either side and on the on-ramps and off-ramps as they wait for those lights. With a few tweaks to lights based on Traffic Manager President's Edition to give them protected left turns and also change the timing of the lights, you could probably optimize traffic a little bit more. You will, however, always run into trouble with left turns and the conflicts that they create. Here we have the diverging diamond interchange in that same spot in that same intersection. As you can see, it is having a bit of trouble with the traffic coming off of the northbound side of the, the highway here. However, in general, it's handling the rest of the traffic fairly well. This is the type of interchange that is definitely the most difficult to set up, and it is the most difficult to optimize in my opinion. However, it does have one of the best optimization characteristics for a diamond type interchange. Here we have the diamond accentuated with Michigan left turns nearby. There are also two traffic lights, one at each end of the U-turn area. And as you can see, one of the U-turns actually has two lanes in it instead of one to help handle a little bit more of the traffic. As you can see, the traffic through here is pretty smooth. However, it does get stopped up by the traffic lights every so often. This was better than putting yield signs there, though. Well, that is it for today's video all about diamond interchanges, a regular diamond, a diverging diamond, and a diamond accentuated with a Michigan U-turn nearby. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next video. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you do, Alfredo here says you should subscribe, or maybe check out this video that YouTube recommends. Well, go on. Why don't you do it?